How's it going everyone? Taki here. I debated doing this showcase until after I made dedicated reviews for the three devices in this video, but it felt better to get this out of the way as soon as possible since a lot of people have been asking me to make this comparison. Today we're going to compare the three best Windows gaming handhelds across a selection of metrics that I think are the most important. In this first section, let's quickly go over the specs and prices of the three devices. In this collection, we have two hybrid gaming devices with the GX functioning as a pure laptop more than a gaming device when compared to the Win 3, and the Aya Neo that functions purely as a gaming device. From low to high, we have the Aya Neo with a base price of $699 to $750, the GPD Win 3 i7 at $899, and the GX Pro at $1,400 at the time of making this video. For this money, you get a Ryzen 5 4500U with 16GB of RAM, 512GB of storage, and a 47 watt hour battery in the AYA. In the Win 3, you get an Intel i7 1165G7 with 16GB of RAM, 1TB of storage, and a 46 watt hour battery. The GX Pro has an i7-1160G7 with 16GB of RAM, 512GB of storage, and for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that it also has at least a 46 watt hour battery as well. The first metric that I want to talk about is battery life and battery performance. All three of these devices can be controlled in a way that can maximize battery life to the point where you can achieve a performance versus battery life level that is acceptable for your situation. For me, two hours of battery life is around the limit that I am willing to accept due to a host of factors that I will go into in this video. The methodology for this section is pretty simple. I set all three devices to 15 watt TDP with maximum brightness and then ran the heaven benchmark until they died. Before doing so, I ran the test once with a battery in each device to record the benchmark score, and then again with no battery and the device plugged directly into a watt meter to verify the accuracy of the hardware info reported charge drain. At 15 watt TDP, all three devices use around 25 watts of power when measured by the meter directly, but the difference is larger when we measure usage with the battery plugged in. You can see those differences on screen now. At this TDP, we're getting a heaven score of 2984 on the Win 3, 2222 on the Aya Neo, and 2446 on the GX Pro. If we zoom into the min and max FPS figures, we can see some of the same truths that are evident in my other testing videos in that Intel has the ability to have a much higher maximum FPS number when we are at or above 15 watt, but it also has a lower minimum FPS when compared to AMD, and you can see this play out in other videos on my second channel. The results of the aforementioned tests are as follows. The Win 3 lasted for 1 hour and 45 minutes, the Aya Neo lasted for 1 hour and 54 minutes, and the GX Pro lasted for the entire two hours at 15 watt TDP. After this test was over, I also recorded how long it took to completely charge back up the device to 100%, and this paints a completely different picture. The Win 3 easily beat out the other two devices at one hour and 30 minutes, the Neo is in the middle at two hours and 11 minutes, and it took the GX Pro a whopping two hours and 38 minutes to fully charge. We will examine more performance metrics in a moment, but for now, let's talk about heat dissipation and fan noise. When you make a gaming handheld like this, you have to balance the trifecta that is battery life, performance, and heat. And there are winners and losers in that last regard in this selection of devices. Using the 15 watt TDP test that we just examined, let's take a look at the reported CPU temperature and the fan noises of each device starting off first with the Win 3. I've placed an audio meter at the bottom of your screen so you can see as well as hear the difference between these clips. Here's the Win 3. Here's the Aya Neo. And here's the GX Pro. As you can see from the previous Heaven scores, it's really easy for the Win 3 and the GX Pro to absolutely destroy the Neo in benchmark scores, especially if both devices are above 15 watt TDP, but the fan noise really starts to be a big issue in both the GX and in the Win 3. To their credit, GPD did a great job of putting a capable cooling solution in the Win 3 because the one in the Win 2 was trash in comparison. This device won't feel hot to the touch even if you use something ridiculous like 30 watt TDP with one hour of battery life, but you will notice the fan noise and so will everyone around you. The 1160G7 is really meant to function at or below 15 watt TDP, so it's not really fair to judge it at these higher levels, but you will need those higher levels to play some demanding AAA games. And this device is by far the worst in heat dissipation. I will say that it's heat you won't feel directly when it's on a desk or when you're using it in handheld mode, but you will hear the tiny fans attempt and fail to keep this device cool when at or above something like 25 watt TDP. And I feel like one netbook could have designed a much better solution in this body if they tried. Here's the same test again, but this time we're gonna use 25 watt TDP. The Aya Neo doesn't really benefit from having this much power, but here it is. And here's the Win 3. 
And finally, here's the GX Pro. Let's switch gears and talk about screens for a moment. A lot of people complain when devices like these don't ship with a minimum of a 1080p screen, but for the most part, you don't really want a higher resolution screen on such a small device. For one, it will hinder base gaming performance by forcing the SoC to push out higher resolution graphics. Suddenly that 15 watt performance you got with a 720p panel takes close to 20 watts on a 1080p display. That's not to say that there isn't a minimum spec because there is. 720p works well, but it also needs to be paired with a big enough panel or ease of use and readability are going to suffer in games that don't allow you to scale the size of in-game text. From low to high, we have the Win 3 with a 720p 5.5 inch display, the Aya Neo with a 7 inch 800p display, and the GX Pro with a 7 inch 1200p display. I don't want this section to be too long, so I'll just say that the GX Pro has the best display in the bunch. The panel is top notch with excellent picture quality, color temperature, and viewing angles. The device also supports custom resolutions, so you can set some lower resolutions like 600p to get better performance at the same wattage. The Aya Neo screen is also really good, but its default screen temperature is a little on the warm side. You can change this in the Radeon settings, but I keep this at its default value to show people what it will look like when they first get it. It's also much easier on the eyes when I play at night. The panel also supports custom resolutions if you want to get more performance out at the same wattage. The Win 3 screen is the worst in the bunch. The screens on all of the review units are too blue, but they have stated that they will adjust this and it should be trivial for their supplier to do this before they ship out their retail devices. The main issue here is that text in many modern games is too small to read easily on such a tiny screen at 720p. In any such game, I would choose any of the other two devices to play even if that meant I would get lower performance doing so. If the Win 3 was the only game in town, you'd probably put up with this annoyance, but the field is much larger now so it doesn't make sense to compromise if you don't have to. At the time of making this video, the Win 3 also seems to be blocked in software or in hardware from accepting any lower res 16x9 resolutions that were very common on the Win 2. I will also mention here that even though the Win 3 has these large bezels, there was no way to make them smaller with the screen that they picked with this design. The back panel of this LCD extends far beyond what you can see in the front, and the only way to balance this out was with these large horizontal bezels. Finally, all three of these devices aren't particularly bright at their maximum settings and wouldn't do that well in any outdoor setting with direct sunlight for what it's worth. Now let's talk about build quality and controls and I wanna make this section relatively quick. In this section, we have two devices with plastic bodies and one made out of a mixture of plastic and metal. In terms of just build quality, the GX Pro is by far the best. Owing to its folding design and the fact that the case is so robust, I don't feel like I need to baby it as much as I do the other two devices. But it also has the worst controls of the three, which makes no sense when the core device is as good as it is. The controls are entirely made of lightweight plastic that feel more like a prototype than a final product, and they have to be charged separately. I will say that they last ridiculously long on one charge, but it just seems like a missed opportunity that these wouldn't charge from being connected to the device directly to make the whole product more seamless. These controls are also the only ones in the bunch that have conductive rubber membranes for input in the same style as many other modern gaming devices. From here we have the Neo with probably the second best build quality of the three, but by far the best controls. The casing on the Founders Edition is very robust, and I feel like this thing could take a beating and be just fine. The buttons use contact switches that are super clicky in this current implementation, and they probably should have been swapped out for something that make less noise, as my prototype was basically perfect and much quieter than this. Should you need to, the controller boards are also very easy to service by replacing either board and connecting one ribbon cable. The only real flaw with the device in terms of controls is that the rumble motor is way too powerful. Whatever idea you have, after I've just said that, you're probably not even close to how it actually feels. If you play a game that makes extensive use of rumble, you will probably want to turn it off because it's too much. It remains to be seen if this component will be swapped out, but it should, and it's very trivial to do so. And finally, we have the Win 3 with the worst build quality of the bunch. This doesn't make any sense to me with the kind of budget that GBD has, but their plastic is far worse than the competition. It's even worse than the plastic used in some retro handhelds with Ambernic easily beating out GBD. I want to mention that this isn't something new. GPD's plastic has been very consistent across the Win line of devices, but I've never really tried to find out why it felt so cheap. A small part probably comes from the thickness of the case in some areas, but it most likely comes from the mixture of plastic that GPD's injection factory uses because their formula is different from the other handhelds in the market, especially the Switch. The Win 3 uses PC plus GF10, Aya uses pure PC, and Nintendo uses PC plus ABS in the Nintendo Switch. If you have any idea about this or expertise in plastic, please share your thoughts below because this has been bothering me for a long time. 
In terms of controls, GBD has the best analog sticks of the bunch with the GX in a close second and the Aya behind that. The Win 3 uses contact switches like the Neo and they feel good. The device is also the only one in the bunch that has analog shoulder buttons for what that's worth. I've already mentioned in another video that the layout here isn't the best, but there are games where this works well, and in those situations, the Win 3 is the better gaming option versus the other two. Let's finish off this video by talking again about the performance using the Heaven Test. I ran this test at a few different wattages when I was originally doing my main battery drain test. Heaven doesn't really paint a very clear picture, but it does help to show where these devices are their most efficient. I also want to mention that it's very easy to game these scores by finagling settings. For example, you can force the Neo to use less than 1400 megahertz on the CPU so the GPU can use more power, or you can even run the GPU at 1500 megahertz at any TDP you want, but I haven't done that. As you can see, it's very easy for both the GX and the Win3 to outperform the Neo as TDP increases based on these tests, and that's largely the case in other settings. I'll also mention that there's nothing the Win3 can do that the GX also can't do. It just does those things with significantly more heat. If we're looking at a situation where all three devices are using enough power that they only have one hour battery life, the Neo would be significantly outpaced in maximum FPS by the other two devices, but it does maintain a higher minimum FPS. The reality is that you'll have to deal with driver issues more than a lack of power on any of these three devices, and at least for right now, AMD seems to be doing a much better job than Intel on that front. AMD also seems to be a better chip for a mass market gaming device because of how efficient the system is on its own without any tinkering at all. It does a great job of maximizing performance by balancing the power usage of the CPU and GPU automatically. You have a lot more control over this with the GX and the Win3 using tools like Quick CPU and Throttle Stop but it's also by no means user friendly and you'll waste a lot of time chasing the experience that AMD gives you for free. At the end of the day, the best gaming device is the device that you'll actually use and all three of these devices are usable. There's obviously a lot more that I could have covered in this video, but I feel like this is a good starting off point. If you like what you saw here, feel free to let me know down below and consider taking a look at other videos on these devices on my second channel. Happy gaming everyone, Taki out.